This is a review for the Florida PERT test, um, college placement test. And I got this from the FLDOE website. Just search for Florida PERT test and you will find it. I'm sure that in other states it's very similar. Um, it might be called something different, but basically when you go to college, like a state college, um, you are given this test and then they either place you in like remedial math and English courses or in regular math and English courses. So this tells the college if you're ready or not. And this is just going to be a review of the math portion of the PERT test. I'm not going to be going over the English portion, just the math portion, okay? So for this, there are 10 sample questions. The first one says, which of the following is a solution to the equation? C plus four minus three C minus two equals zero. So we wanna isolate the C's and get them by themselves. And we also need to combine like terms. So the four like the parentheses, there's a plus on the outside of it. So I don't really need the parentheses anymore. So I could say C plus four minus three C minus two equals zero. If I were to combine like terms, then C minus three C, that's like one minus three is minus two. So minus two C and then plus four minus two. So four minus two is two equals zero. And then I am going to, I could divide everything by two or I could um, subtract two to the other side. So if I do that, I get minus two. And then if I divide both sides by negative two to get the C by itself, then C equals one. So that is how you do the first one. For number two, graph the solution of y equals, no, sorry, well, I mean glasses, y minus two is greater than one on a number line. So I'm gonna do this problem in orange here. y minus two is greater than one. So I'm gonna add two to both sides to get the y by itself, the inequality sign does not change. y is greater than three. So it's not gonna be c or d because it's greater than. The only difference is a has a closed circle, meaning it's greater than or equal to. b has an open circle. An open circle means it's greater than, it does not include the number. So B would be the correct answer. Okay, three and four. For number three, which of the following is the solution to the equation x squared minus six x plus five equals zero? So for this one, we need to factor. Um, and there's several different ways that you can factor. Um, I'm just gonna try like doing the parentheses way first instead of using the quadratic equation. So since it's x squared, I'm gonna put x as my first term. Now I'm going to look at my, um, my signs. I have a negative sign and I have a plus sign. So that tells me that they add to give me a negative and they multiply to give me a positive. So using positive negative rules, if it multiplies to give me a positive, it's either positive positive or negative negative, but it adds to give me a negative. So I know that it has to be negative negative for the signs. And then 
um, it's going to multiply to give me five. So the multiples of five are one and five, clearly. And I'm going to put that in. So if I test that out, negative one times negative five is plus five. And if I add them, negative one plus negative five, that gives me negative six. So to get the solutions, you set each one of these um, things equal to zero. So add one to both sides, x equals one, add five to both sides, x equals five. So the answer for this one is D. Number four, what is the value of the algebraic expression if x equals one half, y is negative one, and z is two? Okay, so we have six x times y squared times z. So x is one half, six times one half for x, and then it says y is negative one, so negative one squared, and z is two. So all I'm doing is substituting in the values for the letters or the variables. So half of six is three. Negative one squared is just negative one times negative one is positive one times two. And one times two is just two, so three times two that equals six. Okay, number five and number six. Which of the following is equivalent or the same as eight minus five divided by two to the third. So I'm gonna write this bigger. So two to the third is the same thing as two times two times two. Two times two is four times two is eight. So eight is two to the third. So we could say it's eight minus five. Well, they don't have that for any of the any of the answers. <laughs> so eight minus five is how much? It's three, yes. So eight minus five is three, and then we're dividing it by two to the third or eight. So that would be A. For number six, we have another factoring equation. So number six says x squared minus x minus six. And we're gonna have our two sets of parentheses. x squared is gonna factor to x and x. Now we're gonna look at our signs. We have a, a minus x minus six. So because it's minus six, that tells me that our two numbers are gonna to multiply to give us a negative. So one answer has to be positive, or one has to have a plus sign in it, and one has to have a negative sign in it. And then it has a negative x, um, so that tells me that they have to add to give us negative one. So our factors of six are one and six, and two and three. One and six do not add to give us negative one, but two and three do. So if it was minus two plus three, that would give us negative one and minus three times positive two would give us negative six. So the answer is C. Number seven, simplify the following expression. 
that's really tiny, <laughs> 3x to the fourth y squared divided by x y squared. Okay, so first thing I notice is there's a y squared on top and a y squared on bottom. That's going to cancel out. Now, when you're multiplying and dividing exponents, if you're multiplying exponents with the same base, like x, um, you would add the exponents. Here, we're dividing it, so you're going to subtract the exponents. And this x on the bottom is just x to the 1. So 4 minus 1 is 3. So that gives us 3x to the third for a. Um, here we have more practice with exponents for number eight. And which one is equivalent or the same as the expression 3ab times negative 5ab. So first I'm going to combine like terms. 3 times negative 5 is... So I have three times negative five is negative 15. So I know my answer is going to be C or D. And then I have A times A. So that's two A's or like A to the one and A to the one. So that's going to be A squared. So I know my answer is going to be D, but let's finish it all the way. And then I have B times B, same thing. It's like you're adding your exponents. One plus one is two, so B squared. Negative 15, A squared, B squared. Okay, so for number nine, what percent of the grid is shaded? So first of all, let's figure out how big the grid is completely. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's 10 by 10 grid. And it looks like this portion of it is 40. And then I have one, two, three, four, five. Five more than 40, so 45%. Um, 45 out of 100, right? because there's 10 by 10 is 100. So that's why it's 45%. Okay, so for number 10, which of the following is the equation of the line that passes through negative two, negative one, and negative four, negative three? So there's quite a few different ways that we could go about solving this. Um, I would find the slope first and because all of the answers are in slope intercepts form. So if I were to find the slope, it's change in y over change in x. So let's say y2 is negative 3 minus y1, which is negative one, those negative and negative becomes a positive. So negative three plus one is negative two. And I'm gonna start with the X value that's attached to the negative three first. So negative four minus negative two, the negative negative becomes a plus, negative four plus two is negative two. And negative two divided by negative two is just one. So our slope is one. That means A and C cannot be the answer. Um, 
now we need to know if our intercept is at one or if it's a negative one. You could graph it or you could plug in one of the points to one of the equations to see um, which would be correct. And I wanna do both because I like to draw. So if I were to graph this really fast, um, negative two, negative one is gonna be left two down one right here. And then negative four, negative three is gonna be left four down three. And our slope is up one over one, up one over one. So our intercept is gonna be at positive one. So the answer is B. So graphing it was pretty easy. Um, I could have also plugged in the numbers. Like let's say I picked um, negative two, negative one. I could have plugged in Y equals X plus one. I could have plugged in ne negative one for Y and then negative two for X to see if that were true. Does negative one equal this? So negative two plus one is negative one and that is true. So that also tells me that B is the correct answer. And I think that is it for the math portion of this PERT sample test. It is. Hope this was helpful.